Cotton Ball Crazy. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? What's up, everybody? <clears throat> What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's up? Hope everybody's had a good week. And, uh, man, I really hope you guys are out there making stuff, creating stuff. That's the whole point. Kind of get you guys some inspiration and make some things. Uh, my week's been super busy. Got a lot of stuff going on. No tutorial today. I'm going to show you uh, what I've been doing through the week. What I've been working on. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to actually take some questions that show up on uh, Halloween paper mache. It's kind of like a Q&A. You know, I'll just go over those questions and get some answers. But what have I been doing? Right now uh, there are two tutorials in the works and it's just it's a whole lot. It's a lot to do it all at the same time. You guys have been keeping up on Facebook. You've seen different stuff on the Pumpkin Demon. Going in extra detail on this thing and, and doing some other Stuff I haven't really done before, so it's it's taking longer. It's mache, people. That's the, that's the way it is. If you anybody here thinks that uh, doing mache projects is a fast thing to do, it is not. It takes patience and time. Back over here, here's another tutorial that's in the works. Uh, it's another way to make pumpkins, and it's using cotton. Cotton ball crazy. <laughs> the the cotton crazy. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, these pumpkins are done in cotton. And pretty much all the detail work besides the teeth done in uh, cotton as well. It could be done in other things, but right now I'm playing with cotton, so that's uh, that's where we're at. Set tight real quick. I'll show you a little bit of footage on a little bit of the progress on that. And then we'll show you a little bit of footage of the progress on the demon. Hang tight, I'll be right back. I know those were quick clips, but that's kind of the point. On the demon, uh, the teeth, they really turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty well happy with that. That is an egg carton clay that I used for that. I do have a video up on the channel, show you how to make it. I can put a link in the description at the bottom of this as well. Go check it out if you've never made a carton clay or aren't familiar with it. Other than that, on this guy, we used, I went ahead and used cotton uh, around the teeth here to make this gum line. That'll go out further, and I've been playing with cotton on the legs here. I want to do uh, one of the legs and arms that have this kind of viney, twisted viney thing that what made the legs or what made the arms type of deal. Just something uh, different. Look for the pumpkin demon in the future. That's going to be a tutorial as well. When you're interested in tutorials, yes, those are longer because I'm really trying to show you step by step how to create that project that way i try not to leave any of the little gaps and things out some of you are more experienced and you don't need to know that stuff but then there's also a lot of people who are new to machine they need to know those things so that's why i try to keep those in there on the tutorials these cotton pumpkins uh i've done these things before i've never showed you guys how to do them this is actually the next tutorial lineup to go out i've got a little more to do on this one back here uh before i've post out the first step. So the first step is going to be just creating the armature and getting the pumpkin to this phase here. And then the next step is going to be probably carving the face, doing details, 
and paint wrapping it up. So we'll do it in two steps. If everything goes as planned, next week, look for this. It'll actually be the first step creating the armature and getting those pumpkins to that stage right there. Some of you may have noticed that the banner artwork is a little bit different on the actual YouTube channel. You may know that, you may not know that, it depends on if you actually go to the channel. But I'll show you that as well. It was something else I did this week. I'll just pop a picture up real quick and show you what we what I made. All right, check it out. This is the new page art or the banner that goes across the top. Um, there's still a little bit of extra room over here, an extra room over here. This, if you're on a mobile device, this pretty much shows up in your window on your mobile. When you're on your computer, you can see these empty gaps over here and here. So here in the future, I may add a few more things here. And a few more things uh, on the other on the other side over there. There's pretty much a video I think on most all of these. Should be a video on this guy. I'm not sure about that one. That was a, a giveaway I did a few years ago. There's definitely a tutorial on that one. There's a video on this one, this one, and a video on this guy here. But it's not really uh, a tutorial. That banner I'm pretty proud of. Uh, it took a while for me to make <laughs> because I'm not a real techie type person but I did do that all on a program called paint.net um, was had a little bit of a learning curve to get it but uh, it was fun and, the, and the, for me the coolest thing or the funnest thing about this deal is that those are actually props and things that I've made and done it's not just stuff that's picked up off the internet somewhere and pasted in so I had a lot of fun doing it any of you guys out there got a YouTube channel and you want to see how I did that I know it's not mache related I'll leave a comment below i can go back and redo it and actually do a tutorial on how i did the uh, banner art for that um, let me know either way it doesn't matter if someone's interested in it i'll do it if not it's no big deal but uh that was pretty cool i might add to it later let's get down to uh, some of these questions uh, from the internet. Specifically, these are questions that have come off of a Halloween paper mache Facebook group. Uh, if I butcher anybody's name doing this, um, sorry in advance. First question uh, is from Corbett Ferguson. His first question was, do you use flour in your mache mixture? What about mold problems? And do you add salt? So here's the thing. I don't, and I've said it in other videos before, but I'll say it again. Um, I used to use, a long time ago, I used to use flour and water uh, as my mache paste, which is pretty much the basic standard mache paste that everybody used forever, and a lot of people still use it. Um, I got away from mache, uh, I got away from flour and water, not because of mold, but because my stuff goes outside for at least 30 days during October so my paste itself is just um, glue and water and it's like a two to one ratio two parts glue to, to one part water right now I use type bond two uh, as my glue I've been told uh, type bond three is better I've looked at type bond three as well in the past and it says it's it it offers itself to be way more weather resistant I just haven't bought, spent the extra money. I think it's another 10 bucks more or something like that for a gallon of it. And I buy my glue a gallon at a time. So uh, no, not right now. I don't, I don't use flour. I just use glue and water. As far as mold problems go, anything will mold. Even the, even the glue and, and water mixture will mold if you don't allow that stuff to dry all the way out. Mold problems is really just a result of <laughs> damp, moisture, darkness, those types of things all in one. They make a combination to uh, create mold. Biggest key to keeping mold from your project is allow each, if you're doing several layers, allow them to dry out thoroughly all the way through before you move to your next step. And then once your project's complete, before you paint it or seal it, make sure it's dried all the way through. Then seal and then paint and generally you won't run into mold issues after that. Second question is still from uh, Corbett Ferguson. Uh, he says, what type of paper? He says, hey, he says, 
He says, hi, what type of paper is not used for mache? Uh, can the select paper ads that I get in the mail be used? Thanks. Can't, you can use them for mache, but you can't, you can't really use them for uh, strip mache, right? Anything that's got a slick, glossy coating on the front of it, that gloss coat really keeps it from absorbing your mache paste. So you want to stay away from that when you're trying to use it as strip mache. You're actually layering things up. What they're good for, and the only thing that they're really good for, is using it to bulk out an armature or to stuff something. So whenever you get down to actually doing your strip mache, stay away from those. They don't really work well. I generally use newsprint. I'll also use foam butt paper. Uh, foam butt paper works well. It soaks up a whole lot, except it's very, very thin. So it takes multiple layers of foam butt paper to use. Uh, paper towels work well. They dry very hard, except they soak up a whole lot of paste. Moon on! This is from David Arndt. It's A-R-N-D-T. I'm whatever uh his question he says i have a project in the works uh it will be inside so i don't have to worry about weather but i'm always worried about when i store and the mice problem the question basically is if i use store-bought paper clay will mice still want to eat it all right so i really wouldn't let mice deter you from uh paper mache or doing paper mache projects as far as mice go, mice will eat anything. Now, it doesn't matter if it's mache, it doesn't matter if it's even plastic, wood, whatever. They get a tooth for just about anything out there, so mice will attack pretty much anything. They've got mice, best bet is to try to get rid of those mice. Other than that, I buy those big plastic tubs, bins, and I try to store all my stuff inside those tubs, put the lids on them, and then they go up in the top of my garage. I don't really have mice problems. Um, the only problem I really ever run across with things chewing on my stuff, freaking squirrels that are constantly messing with my stuff. But if you do have mice, like I said, you can put them in a tub. Um, peppermint oil is really good. You can squirt some of that and lay it around it, whatever. They don't really like the smell of that peppermint at all. There's even another, I think you can buy it like at... Uh, Academy sports places like that in like the hunting section there is like a mouse deterrent type stuff and it actually smells like peppermint you get it spray it it's a real pepperminty smell so if you're worried about that you can store them in a box use some peppermint put it around the peppermint oil that should uh, keep them at bay I'm not going to guarantee it but it should help you out and the last one I'm going to go over is actually it was a uh, it was a comment on a post that I did, uh, the monster teeth, which are what were inside the pumpkin demon, uh, Robert Marshall, he had made a comment on that post <clears throat> and it says, some time ago, and he's talking directly to me, he said, some time ago you were trying sawdust to make pumpkins. Did you decide they were just too heavy or too much hassle? He's like, I tried sawdust for filling the forms to make a medium sized pumpkin and it weighed too much to be easy to work with. But it sure emptied out easier than pulling out plastic bags, newspaper print, and all that stuff once it dried. Okay, so here's the thing. Hang on. The wood clay is, it honestly is way heavier. Uh, this is a full-blown pumpkin I did out of the wood clay. It's very, very, very solid. Um, I keep saying, and I actually I think I need to do it this year, I want to just set him outside. He's been outside. He's been rained on, but I'm going to set him outside for a year because I don't think he'll change at all. Uh, I didn't quit using I didn't quit using the wood clay or playing around with the wood clay because of weight issues. I just need to get more sawdust. So I need to get more sawdust and go after that again. And I try to keep this channel in the paper mache realm, even though the wood clay kind of flows into that. But if I was gonna make, if I was gonna make a pumpkin jack like out of something like that with a wood clay head, then the entire structure I would make out of the wood clay. Because if you try to just put that on a post or whatever, it's gonna be real heavy. You are gonna have issues. So if I was gonna make anything, any other kind of creature or whatever it was, I just the whole thing, I would sculpt in the wood clay so I wouldn't have to worry about 
really weight issues on since it being too top heavy or whatever. I would do the whole thing in it. Is it going to make it that prop, especially this big, heavy? Absolutely, it's going to be very heavy. But the upside to that is, if it's outside, you don't have to worry about it blowing anywhere, and the wind is going to stay. Like that pumpkin right there, it was out on my fence on a deal pedestal thing that I'd set up, and I had the other pumpkins around it. We had quite a few storms, <clears throat> some of them pretty bad. Get home, the other pumpkins would be blown off here, there, and around the yard, and that wood clay pumpkin right there where I set it. So, I mean, give and take. The wood clay is really pretty cool. You can, you can do a lot with it. It's very easy to mold and sculpt and things like that with it. But no, I didn't stop using it because I felt like it was too clunky or too heavy. The very last thing I want to hit on, <coughs> and holy cow, uh, you guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. The channel is almost at 12,000 subscribers. Uh, absolutely just blows me away so it's like at uh, right now it's at 11,876 subscribers that just blows me away so what I want to do if we can reach the 12,000 subscriber mark then I want to do a giveaway uh, it'll prob probably be a pumpkin so I need to get one in the works that's made just for the giveaway so we can reach 12,000 subscribers. We're going to do a pumpkin giveaway. Um, it may be based off leaving a comment uh, under that video whenever I do it, whatever. And we'll figure out those logistics later. But we got to hit 12,000. So like, share, subscribe this thing. Uh, push it to other people. I can't thank you guys enough that are coming along, subscribing, and watching the channel. Once again, I want to say thanks for uh, watching the video, putting up with me, and letting me be... Uh, you take time out to actually let me be in your life to talk to you and show you things. And I really appreciate that. Those of you who actually made it to the end, go down and leave a comment below if you got questions. But leave a comment and say you made it to the end. Um, I'm just curious on how many people actually make it all the way through the videos. If you're new and you like this type of stuff and you want to learn how to do mache and learn how to create things, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll know or hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when a new video comes up. I'm going to try to do this every maybe Saturday or Sunday. Got to get that schedule figured out. But uh, yeah, give this thing a like, subscribe, share it with people. And uh, like always, until next time, keep making something from nothing. What you, what you want, what you, what you want.